Hello and welcome to the Canopy Quick Start. In this video, we'll get started with data logging. In previous videos, we've seen how to connect Canopy to our hardware devices and to construct windows so that we can work with the data extracted from those hardware devices. Measurement means taking data from those hardware devices into Canopy and routing them to the windows so that we can work with it. Data logging means that in addition to routing the data, means that we can also save it to the hard drive on our PC. Let's see what that looks like in Canopy. To log data in Canopy, we have to go to our measurement configuration. And in the measurement configuration is a list of recorders. And by default, Canopy always has one recorder in the list. And I have called that recorder main because this will be the main recorder I use to capture the bulk of the data that I want to record. The log file that I will save to the hard drive on my PC is named using this string of macros, which I can select to configure the name of the log file to be any way that I like. I like using date and time indicators so that I know exactly when the log file was created. And I've set this recorder up to save the date and the time in the name of the log file. And then I'm always guaranteed to have a unique log file name. If we look at the trigger configuration for the recorder, we can see that we're selecting the permanent recording option, which means that the recorder is permanently enabled to record data. And that means that as soon as we push the lightning bolt to start the measurement, this recorder will begin to record data and save it to the hard drive on our PC. And it will continue to do so until we push the stop button and end the measurement. Let's see this in action in Canopy. If I push the lightning bolt to start the measurement, I can see that in the right window, one recorder started with the recording. And so I know that I am recording data. And here I can check to see in the lower right corner of the canopy window, this arrow pointing to the floppy disk icon, indicating that I'm saving data to the hard drive on my PC. The log file has been collecting data for 27, 28, 29 seconds. And so far I have captured 25 kilobytes of data, 26 kilobytes of data, 27 kilobytes of data. And my recording rate is somewhere between four and 600 bytes per second, depending on the moment in time I look. If I push the stop sign and end the measurement, I can see in the right window that my recorder main has created a new log file called main with today's date and time in the name of the log file. And if I look in my project folder, I can see that the log file is saved there and I have recorded my data to my hard drive. So that's fine for recording all of the data that's occurring during the measurement from the time I push the lightning bolt until I push the stop sign. But if I run the measurement for a very long time, this could accumulate an enormous amount of data, perhaps not all data that I'm interested in. Maybe my interest is really around data captured surrounding a specific event. Perhaps I'm interested in capturing data around an upshift from second gear to third gear while I'm driving the vehicle. How would I configure a recorder to capture data just around an upshift from second gear to third gear. Let's have a look. If we open our measurement configuration and go back to our recorder list, I can right click and pick new MDF recorder. And this recorder I will call upshift 23 to capture data surrounding a second gear to third gear upshift. I use the same macros as before to ensure that I get a unique file name every time I save a log file. If we dig deeper into our recorder and we look at our trigger, by default, the recorder is set for permanent recording, which we've already looked at with the main recorder. With this recorder, 
we want to capture data based on the 2-3 upshift event. So we'll set the event trigger option here. By default, we can capture five seconds of data before the trigger and five seconds of data after the trigger. We can adjust these times to anything we want, but for now, we'll accept the defaults. To capture data just around a 2-3 upshift event, we have to create a new signal event. And we will call this signal event upshift 2-3. And we have to indicate what signal we are interested in, and it's the gear signal that we are acquiring from the RAM in our ECU using the XCP protocol. And the value of interest is 3 for third gear. And we want to reach that value of 3 on a positive edge, meaning an ascending value. And we want to fire the trigger when we reach the threshold of third gear. We hit OK. And we have created our new signal event to trigger the recorder. Let's see how that works in Canopy. If we push the lightning bolt to start our measurement, Canopy shows us that one recorder is started with the recording and one recorder is triggered. And if we look over here in the lower left, we can see that we are waiting for the trigger to occur. And here is our gear indicator right here, and we're in first gear. If we accelerate, we'll see our gear climb from first gear to second gear and then to third gear. And when we reach third gear, we get a green indicator that the trigger has fired. And when the post-trigger window time of five seconds has elapsed, the green trigger indicator goes away and we're back to the wait for trigger situation. And we can see in the right window that even though the measurement continues to run, we have already created a log file at the date and time the 2-3 upshift event occurs. Let's do that again. We slow our vehicle down. And now we accelerate. And we shift from first gear to second gear. And we shift to third gear. And our trigger fires. And at the end of the post-trigger window, the green indicator goes away. We go back to wait for trigger, and we can see that we have saved another MF4 file surrounding that second, second gear to third gear upshift event. If we stop the measurement, and we look in our project folder, we can see that we now have two log files from the two upshift events. So that's fine for capturing MF4 log files. What if we want to capture a BLF file that has the raw bus data in it? Not signal-based MF4 data, but raw bus data from the MyCAN CAN monitor device. Let's see how we set that up. Back in our measurement configuration, back to our recorder list, and this time we right-click, and instead of picking a new MDF recorder, we pick new BLF recorder. Canopy names the new recorder bus logging. We'll change this to just be bus log. A little more concise name. And we'll use the same macro construct to build our log file name. But notice this time, instead of saving an MF4 file, we're saving a BLF file. And our file format is specified as BLF. And then we need to indicate what networks we're going to record. We're going to pick the CAN network where our CAN monitor device is to make sure that we're recording the data from that CAN bus. Back in Canopy, let's start the measurement again. And this time we can see that two recorders started with the measurement and one recorder started waiting on a trigger. We let the measurement run for a few seconds. We push stop. And if we look in our project folder again, we can see that now we have saved not just the MF4 files, but also a BLF file with our raw CAN bus traffic.
saved in it. 